Okay, five o'clock in the UK. Um, on the Beggar's YouTube channel, we're going to do a little reading for some of uh, you more junior people out there. Uh, so if you are a young person, uh, my hope for you is three things. Number one, you keep your adventure spirit uh, alive and strong. Always seek out adventure in your life. Number two, keep reading, because uh, reading is how we gain knowledge, skills, and inspiration. And number three, most importantly, developing a great winning survivor attitude. And survivor attitude is about courage, kindness, and never giving up. So, if you are a young person and you're into adventure, you're into reading, and you've got a winning attitude, you're in the right place, uh, we're going to do a little reading. So, I put together some of um, some of my books that I've done for our kids here. Um, lots of you wrote in, emailed in, saying particular books you like, so I tried to dig some of these ones out. Um, now, these ones were popular with you guys, the skills book. And these are just short, little books on waterproof paper uh, that cover everything. This one's about shelter building and everything you need to make shelters. But we cover everything from hiking uh, to camping to first aid to maps to navigation to how to get fit to you know, loads of different things. So we've done many, many of these. Uh, dangerous animals, uh, tracking. Uh, expedition planning. So if you're into this sort of thing, these books are good for you. We did a compilation one as well, it's a bit thicker, that is about survival skills, everything you need, and the books kind of look like that. Um, but these prove really popular with young people because they're waterproof. Um, uh, then I put out some of these bigger manual, um, how would you call them, sort of, how, uh, what do you call them, sort of manuallys, um, um, what do you call them? You know, bigger books. Kind of, anyway, you get the idea. Like this. Done on well, the Survivor Camp. Loads of sort of pictures and fun stories and stuff. We've done them on epic voyages, voyages, uh, expeditions, um, whole sorts of things. Uh, about our planet. This one's Extreme Planet. Epic climbs. Uh, and these are so many of my kind of favourite things that inspired me when I was your age and I was young and I was getting into adventure as a kid and I was like a sponge when it came to books and reading and learning. So hopefully these books, skills book and the bigger manual type books will help you. Um, we do some younger ones as well, again I just bought four of these ones, but these are about um, young people being guided on expeditions um, when they find themselves in really tricky situations and we've done everything, we've done it from sea to rivers to earthquakes to jungles to deserts to mountains and, um, and these are good for younger kids and then probably the books we've sold the most of all around the world and especially in China are our mission survival books and these are these, we've now done 21 of these stories just delivered um, uh, manuscript 21 last week um, but they start off with gold of the gods and they get a wear the wolf, the tracks of the tiger, and rage of the rhino, and you name it, all, all over the world. And it's about a young guy called Beck Granger who um, finds himself in all sorts of scrapes uh, around the world. And, um, and I wanted to give today a special shout out to all of you Chinese kids who read so many of these books. And for me, it's a reminder that the adventurous spirit in young Chinese people is, uh, is big and it's hungry and it's growing. And well done, we should encourage that. A love of the outdoors, uh, a gratitude for friendships, an understanding of the values that really matter in survival. And again, it's that courage, kindness, never give up in Chinese, Yongbo Fanji. So tomorrow in China, Monday, is uh, Children's Book Day. So in China, Children's Book Day, and I just want to say thank you to all you young Chinese readers. Keep going, keep that adventure spirit, and Yong Wu Fan Chi. Um, which brings me to the reading. So what we're going to do today, I thought, is read the very opening of the very first book out of the whole Mission Survival 
um, series. So this is book one out of 21 in this range. And this is called Gold for the Gods. And this is where we get to meet Beck Granger for the first time. And all I'd say is that he is in trouble. And then after this, I'm going to take some questions from you guys. And you guys have emailed in so many questions, I've got them here lined up. And we're going to go through those afterwards. Okay, at last the rain had almost stopped. The rhythmic drumming on the jungle canopy far above had faded into a distant murmur. Only the sullen drip, drip, drop of water splashing into muddy pools disturbed the silence as a single shaft of sunlight broke through into the rainforest below. Peering through the gloom, an inquisitive troop of howler monkeys clung to the lower branches of the trees. Their gaze followed the bright line of sunlight to where a bedraggled shape lay spread eagle in a pool of light down below on the jungle floor. Every few minutes, a monkey let out a blood curdling bark and violently shook the branch on which he was sitting. But the monkeys were beginning to lose interest in this strange hairless ape that lay so deathly still beneath them. This was no longer fun. When they had first begun hurling sticks down from the trees above, the hairless ape had tried to defend itself against a barrage of missiles. Once it had even barked back in their own language. But now it lay as unmoving as a lump of earth, no longer of interest. The time had come to move. As the noise of the monkeys slowly faded into the distance, a sigh that sounded almost human escaped from the inert form. Playing dead was not a survival strategy Beck Granger would normally use, especially with a bumptious group of howler monkeys. But with his body on the brink of exhaustion, Beck badly needed to look after what little energy he still had left. And somewhere not far off, a far worse threat was still lurking. There was only one lord in the jungles of Columbia's Sierra Nevada mountains, and it was not human. As night began to fall, the mighty jaguar, king of the jungle cats, would be patrolling his territory once more. All day long, the young teenager, Beck, had felt his spirit stagger under the combined assault of rain and heat and hunger. Drawing on every ounce of strength he still possessed and using every shred of knowledge gleaned in a childhood spent learning the ways of survival, Beck had pushed himself on Against all the odds, he was still alive. And somewhere out there was the girl, girl he was searching for. In his fevered sleep, he had come face to face with the Indian once more. He remembered the first time he had seen those gleaming eyes. How long ago it now seemed. The carnival, the twins, Don Gonzalo, that extraordinary night in the square the start of the desperate quest to find the lost city. And then Beck remembered. Around his neck hung a muddied amulet in the shape of a golden toad, its eyes glistening in the sunlight, its mouth wide open. Adrenaline surged through Beck's veins. He still had one final chance. Taking a long, deep breath, he put the amulet to his lips and blew. So that's how it starts off and now we're going to chapter one. So it's Beck lying on the jungle floor, half dead, flashbacks to all these crazy scenes that had led to him being here and uh, then he remembered what was hanging around his neck. He gets this little pendant and blows the whistle for help but will it come? So that's the opening of gold of the gods. Um, okay, so I'm going to take some questions from you guys. Here we go. Okay. Um, first one, I'm answering this one because I got asked this about a thousand times. How was it filming with Prime Minister Modi? And I know that lots of you in India watching this 
And I just want to say, first of all, we love India. What an amazing country. What a privilege it was to film with Prime, your Prime Minister, Prime Minister Modi, uh, out in the jungle, take him on a mini adventure, get to know the man, uh, his vision, and share that time together. But we had an amazing, you know, an amazing experience. And, you know, I look at those sort of things and, and really it's a huge privilege, you know, he's Prime Minister of, of now almost the biggest country on earth, the largest democracy on earth, uh, you know, and his vision to me was saying I want to clean up India, you know, I want to, I want India to lead the way in, uh, in positive uh, environmental issues and there is much work to be done but we encourage that and we encourage good ecology and trying to get rid of the use of plastic and trying to get rid of the use of fossil fuels and you know bad things like that and we try and encourage anything that protects our planet so uh, for me it was great to hear his vision and let's hope uh, many leaders in the world can really take up this mantle of doing all they can to protect our planet it's our only planet we've got to look after um, so that's the first question but yes what a privilege it was in a time that I will never forget second question will you come back to India <laughs> um, I will come back to India we filmed recently with Rajni Kant and um, that has just aired out there and what a great guy he was um, we've done another one that airs pretty soon I'm not going to tell you who it's with yet um, but another Indian superhero of, a, of an actor um, and we're going to come back, God willing, and do more of these. But India is a country I love so much. I love it for the pe your people, uh, your spirit, your warmth, and your amazing wilderness. So, yes, I will be back to India. Favourite Bear Grylls TV show that we've done? Out of all the series, which is my favourite? Is it Man vs. Wild, Running Wild, or You vs. Wild? Um, Man vs. Wild will always be special for me. Those many years, just one man. You know, battling against the elements with our small crew, and some amazing times and experiences. Um, you vs. Wild for Netflix, our interactive show, that was a bubble, more like making a movie um, and really fun to do. Uh, and that's done so well for Netflix, and it's been a privilege to see that. But I think Running Wild for me is special because it's introducing other people to the wild and everything that the wild can give us all, which is confidence above all. And, uh, and awareness of how beautiful the world is and it tests our spirit. And I love seeing that in other people as well. So Running Wild for me is always a special one. Favorite Chinese star we film with? We're filming many Chinese stars as well. I think um, Yao Ming, the basketball player, seven foot six, I think he is. Uh, that was an experience, taking him on an adventure. I'll never forget that one. Uh, but we've done many Chinese stars and love that experience favorite u.s star um i think probably president obama whilst he is you know sitting president to be able to take him away even with all the secret service on a, an adventure to alaska for me was an amazing moment and again like with with prime minister modi just a privilege to hear his vision and uh, and show close up the, the effects of climate change and that was a goal of that show and I think he was pretty shocked at how dramatic some of this glacial erosion was going on in Alaska was. So um, that was a privilege to actually show. Um, two more questions. Next one, I am not very good at school. Does that matter in life? <laughs> Gosh, listen, here's the thing, school is not life. School is just a training ground and you know you don't want to leave school as a superhero because you're peaking too early what you want to leave school with is a resilience and an ability to pick yourself up when you fall down and you want to leave school with a fight for life and a determination that you're going to go for things so if you're not particularly brilliant at school don't worry nor was i i definitely wasn't but don't peak at school peak in life and the last question read from me on new book Mud, Sweat and Fears. So Mud, Sweat and Tears was my autobiography, it came out 10 years ago now. Um, it went to number one, it spent I think 18 weeks at number one and it's been a popular book obviously for me around the world with, with fans uh, or, or supporters. Um, 
I've been pretty reluctant to write a sequel to that. Um, but I'm doing it because Months When Tears ends really when Man vs. Wild starts. And so much has happened since then. And in a way, I want to tell my children and my family those stories. Um, so I've written a sequel to Mud, Sweat and Tears. It's called Mud, Sweat and Fears. I'm still writing it. I'm about three quarters of the way through. It will be out early next year, I think, or maybe even for Christmas time. And when I finish it, I promise I'll read it. In fact, I might even read from it next week, next Sunday, five o'clock. I'll tell you what, I'll do a little reading for it. But I can't promise that mine can't change. It's still raw manuscript. Um, so there we go. Um, anyway. 15, 20 minutes with you guys, so fun, Sunday evening, and I hope for uh, all of you, if your parents watching, um, I hope this helps in some small way to give a bit of bedtime reading um, to your kids, uh, and if you want to use it in school during the week, um, all good, and um, keep reading, keep going, remember, courage, kindness, never give up, and for you Chinese readers on Children's International, Children's Chinese Book Day tomorrow, Young boy.